Well, hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on an assessment of lightweight secondary windows. Before we get started, I'm going to review just a few webinar logistics. Today's webinar is based on an evaluation by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and you can find the full report as well as summary documents on gsa.gov. And we'll also be posting links to that project page in the Zoom chat window. Today's webinar, you'll be in listen only mode and you can submit questions by using the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen. And you don't need to wait until the end of the presentations to submit your questions. In fact, we encourage you to submit questions well in advance of the Q&A session. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be shared with you. And you can find the presentation slides and recordings for all past webinars on our webinar page at gsa.gov. And you can also access all webinar recordings on our YouTube channel. And we'll also be posting those links um, there in the chat window. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to the director of the Center for Emerging Building Technologies, Kevin Powell. Thank you, Andrea. And I wanna thank everybody out there for joining us today. Uh, we're very excited to share results from this study. Uh, spoiler alert, this technology performed well. We think it will represent a key tool in our net zero building tool belt. In terms of our agenda, I'm gonna offer some brief opening remarks to put this technology in broader context. Our PI will then present a more detailed account of the results from our field study and an analysis of the potential for broader deployment. And we'll then hear from our GPG regional program manager who will offer a boots on the ground perspective. And most importantly, we'll uh, spend some time answering your questions, which is Andrea says you need to put into the chat. Um, next slide. So relative to, um, to essentially, well, Windows in particular, there really have been many technologies over the past couple of decades that improve facility operations, particularly in the area of HVAC and controls, lighting as well, of course. There really hasn't been a whole lot of innovation in terms of envelope performance. I think we could safely say that in 1991, so really 30 plus years ago, Double pane windows were the state of the art in the US and they still are really. So there's a lot of opportunity to improve building envelope performance and windows in particular. Next slide. And that really is brings us to what we're here to talk about today. There have been significant advances in the commercialization of thin glass as a result of the proliferation of the ubiquitous smartphone, flat panel TVs. And last month, we presented results from the application of that technology to high performance, newer replacement windows. In this webinar, we're gonna present an application of this technology as a retrofit solution where window replacements are too costly. Next slide. So let me turn this over to uh, Kasal Kiet Ringwatana, who is our principal investigator from NREL and led evaluation of this technology. Kasal. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Um, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is uh, Kasal Kiet Ringwatana. Um, I'm a researcher, a senior engineer. Uh, at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. Um, so talk a little, bit, a little bit about NREL. NREL is the one of the 17 Department of Energy National Laboratory Systems, uh, but we are the only national lab that focus um, on the energy efficiency and renewable energy um, area. I've been with uh, NREL uh, leading and supporting um, NREL uh, 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 government agencies on the energy efficiency and renewable energy uh, projects and programs. Uh, uh, this is my 13 years at NREL. Uh, before that, I was uh, a, working for a consulting firm, uh, working in various uh, roles for the projects uh, 
in the high performance buildings areas, energy assessments, uh, modeling, and then also um, uh, building energy uh, commissioning. I am also a, a professional uh, engineer registered in the state of Colorado, certified energy manager, and also a lead uh, accredited professional. Um, so today I will be presenting um, a summary of our findings uh, on our uh, research work uh, uh, for this uh, uh, projects, the technology demonstration and, uh, and validation of the uh, secondary windows uh, technology. Next slide, please. So for the, uh, this, what, what is the, the lightweight? What is the tech, uh, secondary windows? A lot of people uh, might be uh, familiar with the uh, name. There's a different names of these uh, secondary window, uh, including uh, window insert okay, or um, a storm window. But this is the a, a interior storm window, a typical storm window we, we install outside of the existing window. But this is the this application is the uh, will be installed inside of the building. So and um, so what, what is make is lightweight, like uh, Kevin just mentioned with the uh, um, more application and popularity of using the thin glass, um, you know, to the electronics uh, world, it's becoming more popular also uh, into the uh, uh, window uh, manufacturing. Um, so the thin glass is basically two or three times lighter than a standard glass. So uh, it would be a good, uh, once it put together as a unit, it's a good application to add into existing um, uh, structures that may be sensitive to weight, right? And it's uh, one of the benefit is very easy to install, no drilling, uh, no air permanent device, easy to install and also remove. And it's worked really, really well with the um, any building, um, as Kevin mentioned about, like maybe a cost prohibited in terms of like the uh, uh, building uh, replacement, but also like you know some limitation that's uh, maybe from the aesthetics uh, limitation, such as the historic building that you cannot make any change from the uh, for the exterior buildings. So this is going to be a good application for. Uh, next slide, please. So um, there are two uh, configuration of these uh, uh, secondary windows. One is a, a single pane and a double pane. Um, they all uh, come uh, with the uh, insulated fiberglass uh, frames. Um, so make it uh, superior in terms of the thermal performance. At this, um, you can see that on the left hand side, this is a uh, the single pane, and then on the right hand side is double pane. So it depends on the size, depends on the applications. Uh, you can see that why the uh, um, the thickness is different uh, between the single pane and then the double pane. So it's depend on the uh, the application and the size. Like, like I mentioned, that sometimes like they might have to uh, making the thin glass is uh, slightly uh, thicker. But it's still like uh, in, within the thin glass uh, um, uh, uh, specifications, uh, you know, to make sure that the structure integrity of like the windows is appropriate for uh, the window uh, application. Uh, next slide, please. So this is the we're gonna talk a little bit more on this uh, once like we dive into the uh, our um, findings. But this is a kind of high level in terms of performance. You know, you, you can see that so when we talk about the uh, thermal performance, which is the uh, is a U factor or U values uh, of the windows uh, for the single pane. You know, approximately uh, under uh, R one, and once we include this uh, improving with this um, secondary windows, you know, it's uh, basically double or even quadruple the performance of these uh, uh, single pane windows. Next slide, please. So a little bit in more detail of uh, comparisons between these uh, single pane and double pane secondary windows. Um, you know, the um, 
the cost is approximately uh, this is the uh, install cost you know first install cost first cost so um, approximately five dollars difference between these uh, two technologies and then uh, definitely the weight uh, increasing but still like you know significantly lower compared to like um, still like uh, for the double pin secondary still even um, uh, less than half of the uh, uh, standard double pin uh, windows in terms of weight. And the uh, condensation resistance uh, is, uh, it could significantly improve this uh, condensation resistance. It's particularly with the uh, building in the uh, cold climate locations, uh, you know, cold and humid often uh, may um, experience the uh, condensation happenings on the window. So um, this technology will help improving these uh, condensations uh, uh, resistant uh, to the existing windows, as well as the air leakage. So, you know, a lot of the uh, single pane windows experience a high air, leak, uh, air leakage, uh, building tightness and you know, to, um, so, uh, is significantly uh, reduced. We're gonna go to in more detail of this uh, at uh, leakage as well. So next slide, please. So um, again, uh, this is the a summary of the findings of our research work of these uh, monitoring and verifications uh, work that we conducted uh, at the uh, uh, Denver Federal Center. This is one of the GSA facilities um, uh, is at the Building 53. The Building 53 uh, was built in the 1960s, you know, of course, with the um, single pane windows everywhere. Uh, it's a two uh, story building, uh, consists of uh, offices, uh, conference, uh, training space, like industrial laboratories, and, and as well as uh, warehouses. Um, so we're going to talk about it, uh, the size implication and how lightweight so that the ladies uh, from the left hand side, like, you know, this is, a, 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 this is not the, si the size that we install It's even much bigger uh, windows uh, a size than uh, she comfortably can handle and, and hold that uh, uh, secondary window. So it's really lightweight. Next slide, please. So on the m &V design. Um, we um, install the uh, secondary windows, uh, 10 windows on the, one of the uh, wing uh, uh, of the building 53, total of 10 uh, um, secondary windows, uh, five in the enclosed buildings and, and five in the open office. Each office will have a combination of both a single, a single, single, win, single pane and a double pane windows. Um, so we install numbers of uh, monitoring sensors, measure glass temperature, uh, frame surfaces, space conditions, and use those uh, um, field uh, data to calibrate our model. Uh, the model was created in the um, DOE Windows and, and Therm software. And uh, these uh, two uh, primary uh, software often used uh, for uh, calculate the uh, thermal performance rating of uh, any windows or any window attachment. So the result is the uh, thermal performance indices that you know with the uh, Caribbean model and then with the measured data. Um, and then we use this kind of performance uh, um, index uh, and then a model is, is in the energy plus, the whole building energy simulations. Uh, this is the, gonna be a, a sort of a techno economic analysis uh, uh, for the, uh, to evaluate this technology uh, for the, and we conducted in the uh, uh, large and medium office uh, buildings uh, model uh, using the DOE um, commercial um, reference buildings model. And we calculate various of the uh, energy savings, HVAC capacity um, uh, reductions, as well as the economic of the technology. Next slide, please. 
So this is the uh, a simulated model result. So this is just only the, the window and the models. Uh, again, people who are pretty familiar with the windows, um, you, you can uh, put a lot of configurations and then of the windows assembly and you will get the, with the appropriate uh, boundary conditions, you will get the, um, the performance um, of these uh, windows. Uh, uh, for the therm uh, simulation, yeah, this is the uh, two-dimensional uh, heat transfer. Basically, you can see the, the heat transfer, the temperature gradients uh, from the uh, boundary that was setting. We're looking at, we're comparing with the um, the actual uh, data, few data, and then the uh, predicted uh, temperatures uh, from uh, various uh, locations that match the uh, uh, monitoring. So the results, as I mentioned, like, you know, it's the U values, so heat gain coefficients, uh, visible transmitting, and also the uh, condensation rating. Uh, it's definitely showing a signif significantly improve on the thermal performance of the existing windows. Next slide, please. So um, the another side benefits of this uh, thermal performance energy saving is uh, an increased uh, thermal comfort. So we uh, have uh, monitored the uh, temperatures and uh, see that's how improved from the, uh, with the existing um, single pane window and then the uh, window with the secondary windows. Uh, so the uh, data on the right-hand side, it's showing like the, during the cold day, um, outside temperatures are pretty, uh, very cold uh, day. Uh, you can see that the uh, surface temperature of the windows uh, significant, significantly improved. Uh, by at least 20 degrees. So uh, definitely uh, creating a warm surfaces and improve a lot of uh, thermal comfort uh, to the occupant. Um, people that who are pretty familiar with sitting or working near the window, we often feel cold. Uh, we call it, you know, uh, the effect of like, they might call it drafty windows, you know, sitting, it's, it's a lot of effect of you know, heat loss from our body to the cold surface temperatures and then the convec convective heat transfer that happening uh, near the windows. So uh, with this technology will improve, significantly improve uh, this thermal comfort. And of course we uh, conducted the um, uh, thermal comfort analysis uh, uh, using the uh, University of uh, Berkeley uh, thermal comfort to uh, CBE thermal comfort tools and uh, uh, conduct the uh, thermal comfort. Uh, this is the per Azure 55 thermal comfort batteries. Uh, the, um, uh, the results showing uh, the majority of the conditions are within the uh, comfort battery. So that's a good result. And again, the detail of this uh, uh, analysis and study you can be uh, can be find in more detail in the report. Uh, next slide, please. So for the uh, condensations, as I mentioned, that uh, it significantly improves the uh, condensation resistance. You know the existing windows uh, we um, estimate at the uh, twelve uh, CR uh, condens condensation ratings, and then with this the uh, combination of this uh, single pane and double pane window significantly improve uh, up to uh, 44 to 46 uh, CR. Next slide, please. Um, impact of air infiltration. This is additional uh, benefits. Um, um, DOE estimates that the, the, um, the heat loss uh, due to the air leakage, it's accounting for like you know even even twenty percent of the building use through the building envelope, right? The um, the data on the right hand side it's showing like the higher the um, uh, infiltration, uh, definitely the heat loss that you will get, and also the at the colder climate at the same uh, heat. Um, uh, infiltrations, uh, you know, the more heat loss uh, you will get for the colder climate. Right? So definitely 
uh, reducing air infiltration, improve air tightness will save you um, uh, a lot of uh, energy use. Next slide, please. So um, the air infiltration or air tightness is uh, 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 somehow this is this is not a part of our study, but I, we want to presenting the um, and in the independent uh, studies. Um, that showing and also like the um, AERC uh, people but who are familiar with a lot of the uh, standards might be familiar with NFRC fenestrations uh, rating, right? So NFRC basically is the uh, fenestration rating for windows and, uh, and AERC um, uh, rating is definitely, uh, is for the any window attachment. So a slightly uh, different, but a lot of the time like going through um, um, stringent, like you know, um, way to uh, estimate uh, uh, and then the rating any uh, window and window products. So, um, AERC estimate that an average uh, air infiltration uh, for a single uh, pane window is approximately a uh, two cfm. I'm sorry for that uh, um, small typo. Two cfm per square foot. Um, and then uh, with the energy star uh, uh, storm windows, you know, you, the, the leakage is uh, required to be lower than 0.5 CFM per square foot. Uh, but the, with this um, independence uh, uh, study um, showing that this uh, both uh, secondary and, uh, I'm sorry, both single pin and the double pin secondary window have the air infiltrations approximately 0 0.06, 0 0.06 CFM per square feet. So it significantly reduced the um, um, air infiltration uh, to the buildings. Next slide, please. So uh, this is another um, additional um, uh, benefits besides the uh, energy savings that you will get if the work is done um, and then later on or at the same time you have the uh, happen to have the HVAC improvements or replacement as well. This is additional uh, benefits that uh, you may get uh, from the HVAC capacity reductions. Uh, from this study, uh, we estimate that uh, for the medium office, uh, the uh, the HVAC capacity uh, can be reduced uh, from uh, 13 to 19 uh, percent uh, for uh, cooling and heating, or approximately $8,500 per year over the 20 years uh, over the life of the HVAC. Uh, next slide, please. And um, so, and this is the um, energy savings and then the economics uh, when we did analysis. Again, we did both analysis for a uh, medium and large office. So this is the results as example for the uh, medium office. Um, we can see that the, uh, uh, this analysis is based on the first, first cost of the uh, system means like, you know, you're buying a new one and put it in. It's not an incremental cost of anything, but the payback is still in in very uh, favorable um, payback. Uh, paybacks is uh, under ten years uh, paybacks, and saving is approximately uh, fifteen percent. And uh, this estimate uh, not even include any additional um, HVAC capacity reduction, as I mentioned. It's just only energy savings, and uh, also like the. Um, uh, air tightness or air infiltration improvement we not include in this analysis, you know, uh, still uh, giving a very, very good uh, economic. Uh, next slide, please. So we also uh, did additional um, anal uh, analysis or studies uh, to uh, whether the uh, single pane and double pane, how they perform um, in the uh, warmer climate with um, customized uh, um, solar heat gain coefficient. Uh, the result is find out, find out that um, 
uh, very interesting that actually for the uh, warmer climate, um, you don't need um, the, the uh, a super insulated, as we all know, like it's a similar a concept as uh, you probably don't need a triple or quad pin for the warmer climate because a lot of the time uh, the solar control is uh, it's very important uh, shading coefficient or like you know solar control or uh, solar heat gain coefficient this kind of term it's uh, it's more important and uh, with this analysis it's showing that actually the single pin secondary um, have a better payback uh, in the uh, warmer climate uh, with the solar control. Next slide, please. So uh, in summary, um, you know, uh, for these uh, uh, studies, as we mentioned, that's, you know, the energy savings is, you know, between um, 11 to 18 uh, percent uh, savings. Uh, this is for a medium sized office. Uh, this is across the uh, climate zones. Um, and uh, uh, reducing uh, air infiltration is, is added benefits, uh, particularly uh, for the uh, cold climates. And um, it's uh, definitely improved the thermal comforts, the, the surface temperatures, uh, window surface temperatures uh, improve uh, up to uh, 20 degrees, as well as it's uh, improved the uh, window condensation resistance uh, to the existing uh, single pane window. Uh, in terms of cost, cost, effective, cost effectiveness, the, the payback is between six uh, to 11 years. Um, as we mentioned that, you know, the, um, any, any improvement, any, any work, it's quite specific to the buildings and then the climate zone. So uh, we, uh, we encourage, you know, the uh, further detail uh, study uh, for your buildings. Uh, but this uh, analysis and the results uh, are supposed to provide a guideline uh, and then uh, maybe for you, new uh, consideration of this technology uh, for your projects in the future. But again, it's, it's highly specific to the site. So we encourage a, a detailed study uh, when you're doing the study. So uh, uh, that's uh, for my presentation. So I'll I'll give it uh, to uh, next uh, section to, to Tyler Cooper for GSA. Thank you. Thanks, Gasol. Um, so yes, um, I'm Tyler Cooper, uh, mechanical engineer here in Region 8 for GSA. I'm going to go over on the ground feedback, general installation of the um, window inserts, and um, feedback from the occupants. So uh, next slide. Um, so. The um, big thing with these is easy insulation process. Um, on general, assuming everything sized correctly, we'd estimate about a minute per person for one window to install. Um, if there's other issues with, um, with sizing that can increase. So conservatively, we estimate about $1.15 per square foot on installation um, cost, um, which assuming 15 minutes per window, um, just for cost estimating purposes. Uh, big thing with these, you have no drilled holes or permanent devices that are needed to affix the windows, um, which we will go over a video here that shows the installation of these. So you can see here we're on the interior of the building and they're essentially just going to drop right into the uh, existing window space. Um, what we're looking for is a full suction around that window um, into the space. And you see there, that's all it takes where we're done in 10 seconds with that installation. Um, we'll watch that one more time too, if anyone's curious. So that is that is the extent of the installation process. Um, next slide, I'll go over some of the challenges that we um, did face with these. Um, so for the, um, where we installed these at building 53, the existing structure was concrete and brick walls built in the 1940s. Um, so we had experienced settling of the windows. They weren't square. So, um, as part of the installation process with these, we went through and, um, took measurements of every window in the, um, in the area that we were replacing. Um, as noted, a lot of these weren't square. 
So as part of that process, to ensure we've got that proper seal around the windows, we modified the gasketing on each of those inserts. Um, there's a default um, default size, so we were able to remove the existing gasketing on those, go to a thicker gasket in places where we didn't have a perfect fit around the windows. Um, this allowed us to get that um, air sealage that we were looking for, um, making sure that they were fitting properly in the windows and getting that seal that we're looking for. Um, there is the option to add additional safety fasteners. They're not necessary, um, but we did add a couple of these, um, pretty much just a small little bracket that you can attach them to the existing wall. Um, any fastener would do, and that just makes sure that um, any settling these wouldn't fall out. But in general, um, the windows will sit perfectly in the existing um, window without any need for attachments there. Uh, next slide. Um, so this is just a basic uh, suction tool. Um, as you saw with the installation, once we're getting in there, because of the gasking around there, um, you do have a pretty tight seal with the window. Um, so we, what we used for removal of these is a suction tool like this, um, facilitates the removal and cleaning. Um, without that, you have no means to grip onto the window. So this gives you means to pull it out. Um, obviously the clean frequency is going to depend on the condition of the existing single pane windows that we are retrofitting these onto the amount of leakage that is taking place there. Um, but with that said, the installation that you saw is about 10, 15 seconds. So with that, they remove just as easily, um, if situations arise where we do need to go through and clean between those two windows. Uh, next slide. So in terms of occupant satisfaction. Um, we had that 60% of our occupants in the uh, space were satisfied. Um, we'd noted that um, there was thermal, some thermal discomfort, but that was due to the existing HVAC in the space. Um, as Casal mentioned, um, most of the, the uh, thermal radiation coming off the windows, the cold factor um, draftiness was uh, significantly reduced as a result of that. Um, the can notice the window inserts on the inside of the building, but they do provide a clear opening to the outside space. And along with that, um, the, unless you're using specific films, you are still going to have um, glare, um, glare um, happening similar to what would happen previously. Um, but that's going to be the case with any window installation. Uh, next slide. So uh, best practices, um, as mentioned, um, going to the higher efficiency windows, we can, um, as part of a whole building envelope retrofit, we can reduce the size of our HVAC capacity requirements. Um, so when we have the opportunity to combine these projects with additional HVAC projects, we can right size the mechanical equipment, making sure that we're downsizing that and see additional energy savings beyond what we're seeing from the uh, reduced energy loss at the windows. Um, the configuration should be customized for different climates. Um, of note is the solar heat gain coefficient that Saul mentioned, um, allow us to reduce that solar heat gain um, in those warmer climates um, where it is more beneficial in the colder climates during the winter months. Um, right, with that said, recommend the uh, high solar gain heat coefficient. Um, Probably recommend that for heating dominated climates. Um, one, make sure we are maintaining that um, in those buildings. And conversely, um, we want to block that heat gain um, and have a low solar heat gain coefficient um, in those cooling dominated climates. Uh, next slide. So in terms of our deployment recommendation, um, Cold climates, we'd recommend the double pane secondary windows with high solar heat gain. That's going to be the most cost effective. Um, warmer climates, as mentioned, that single pane insert uh, with low solar heat gain um, coefficient, that has a better return on investment. Um, these are better suited for, they are well suited for historic buildings um, where changes to the external facade are limited. Um, as mentioned, site specific evaluation is going to be helpful in gouging the success of these window retrofits. On average, we 
um, estimate probably about a 20 year lifespan for these window inserts. So, and going through and making those um, project decisions, uh, it's helpful to go through, look at what your expected lifespan is for that, um, what the condition of those existing single pane windows are, and if it is gonna make sense to add these window inserts versus going to a full scale uh, window retrofit and upgrading to double, triple or quad pane windows as part of that process to um, increase that overall performance of the envelope. Um, and that should all be evaluated. So um, with that, we'll kick it off to the Q&A. Great, thanks. Um, so we have a bunch of questions. We'll try and get through as many of these as we can. And if we aren't able to answer your question, we'll also be following up. So first, uh, we have a number of questions about whether these windows um, stay operable um, after the uh, installation of the secondary window. Um, I'll, I'll answer that question. Uh, for this, because of the nature, because of the existing window, um, the single pan itself is not operable. And, and this is like um, the application that we are testing. It's basically improving the existing fixed window. So this is not the uh, operable uh, windows that we use. But again, if the existing is operable, operable again, we, you know, it's, it doesn't mean that we, we can put it into any uh, operable window, but it's by itself is not operable. So, um, and do we know the largest uh, window size that these inserts um, apply to? Um, we don't have that information, but as you've seen in the pictures, it looks like um, the, the one that we are testing is, um, I believe, is seven by five, uh, seven feet by five feet. And then uh, the one in the picture, you can see that it's definitely big size. It's like probably at least, you know, um, five to seven feet. It's very similar, but even bigger than, than what we are testing. Okay, and we'll get back to you with a more specific um, on those size limitations. Yeah, um, but we, we expect you, we also like, um, uh, Recommend that we're consulting with the manufacturer. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. they'll probably have more information on that. Sorry. Yeah. I believe um, we'll follow up on this too. I believe if you did have a larger and larger, you can essentially combine two sets of windows there and then put a divider between that to um, work with the larger opening. And okay. we'll, that, we'll follow up on that too. Okay. That's Thanks a very good that. point. Yeah. So, um, uh, prior experience with interior storm windows has found that the moisture can be trapped between the original single pane and the interior storm, creating problems like rot. Um, how does this solution address that problem? Yeah, I um, I would say that, that you know from the results, it significantly uh, cut the air infiltration. So number one is like you will have a a less impact on the air infiltration, you know, coming to the uh, to the building uh, to the um, to the building, as well as the improved uh, surface temperatures. Um, often, it's like you know, condensation happening when the surface is very very cold. When um, so, it's unlikely it's gonna happen with the um, the surface inner surface of the secondary window itself because of, it's a warmer uh, surface temperatures, but the uh, surface in between the, um, the existing single pane and then the secondary, secondary windows, uh, those um, we don't know. Number one is like, we didn't experience any, any problem like that. Um, and number two is like, uh, because of the space uh, in between the existing single pane and then the double pane, the gap is very small. We're talking about uh, the amount of moisture in that gap, it's very, very small. So I, again, we don't have the, that data for now, but it's unlikely it's gonna happen, uh, so. Great, um, thank you, Kasal. Um, so how would this work, um, this uh, secondary windows work if you have existing security or blast film on the existing windows? Um, is there any impact on blast film performance? 
Um, no, uh, again, this is nothing. There's no changes uh, to the existing windows. So um, I don't expect any impact or any uh, changes uh, to the existing, whether it's going to be uh, blast resistant or just a typical windows. There shouldn't be any impact. Great. Um, do we know what holds the thin glass in place? That's a secret. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't, no, the um, definitely there's a um, a specific the adhesive that's you know that's used in the um, uh, window industry. I know that uh, many that manufacturers like uh, talking about even the high performance adhesive they. You know, and these windows they've been tested in like in terms of like du durability and longevity. So, um, so yeah, it's a special chemical adhesive. Right. <laughs> That's all I can say. And do we know if the thin glass is more prone to breakage from impacts, like maintenance bumping into it while cleaning? That's a good point. That's a good question. Um, it possible because of the nature of the thin glass itself. So. Um, but however, like, you know, during our study, we install, we remove, we didn't have any problem with that. Um, so uh, again, you know, this is because of glass and windows, uh, gotta be, um, do it gently, right? And then the, uh, be careful on that one, but we didn't experience uh, during the removal uh, of these uh, units during the study. And um, we had a number of questions about how these attach. Um, so Tyler, Kasal, can you talk a little bit more about how these attached, whether it was magnets or what actually holds the, what holds them in place? Okay, I'll, I'll speak a little bit and then Tyler, maybe you can chime in as well. So in general, they have a, a specific, a special um, a seal around the, the secondary window uh, once like you put it in, it's seal around the um, uh, edge, you know, of these windows, and uh, there's no adhesive or any uh, specific attachment on that one because once like you push it in, it's already uh, creating a suction um, that's holding the window by itself already. That's why we need a suction cup when we want to remove it. Tyler, you have anything to add? Sorry. Yeah, and I guess that's what I'm referring. I, I don't know this, but I was referring that to as the gasket. But yeah, it's a seal specific to specific to those windows, and then um, that'll be sized according to um, ideally that'll be sized according to the opening in the window, um, so we get that proper suction. Mm -hmm. So one, uh, we did have a comment that these were installed, inserts were installed at a historic building in Baltimore. I don't think these were that they weren't the same inserts. They weren't these lightweight thin glass inserts. They're the previous uh, version of inserts that we tested. Um, there, there was an issue, it sounds like, with things falling off. Um, but do you know, I don't know if you can say anything, either Kevin or Tyler, about that installation and in, also in regards to this technology? I'll take the first crack and say that okay. we, we need to research what that, or you know, sort of reach back and see what that tech, what what specific insert was put into place. I don't think it was this one. Um, it does raise a question that actually maybe Casal, you could answer or Tyler, which is if you have a very leaky exterior window and then you put these in place, it, does that put additional stress, I guess, on that gasket or attachment? And it sounds to me like the one that was in Baltimore had had some real issues with that attachment piece. Um, and I understand the attachment is proprietary, but any any thoughts on that? And probably Casal, you'd be the best person to answer that. Yeah, thank you. Um, again, like don't know much about the detail of that study and what's happened, what's the technology, but very likely I, I would uh, guess that maybe uh, the seal or the gasket maybe not, not tightly installed. That's probably a potential problem. Uh, but uh, again, with a uh, question that Kevin asked that what's happened with the leaky uh, single pane window, I, I would say that, of course, there gonna be um, uh, air movement between the existing uh, single pane and then this the window, uh, secondary window or window insert. But I don't anticipate that it's gonna be 
the wind effect or the, the blowing in is going to be enough to blow in the secondary window off with the you know gasket that we put it in there. So I, I don't know the, the, yeah, again, I don't know the results or the, or the detail of that previous study, but with this one, I, I don't anticipate that problem. Great. Anything else from you, Tyler, on that one? Oh, I, I think I can mention essentially like um, if there are concerns beyond the seal of the, um, the steel on the window, we did do a couple of test installations of brackets and really that was all the external support we needed with just one small bracket into the wall surrounding the um, insert. And that was enough to provide that additional security um, for the window if there were concerns about that falling out. But um, in general, we had no issues with that. And that was more of a precautionary measure. Great, thank you. Um, do, do these secondary windows help with sound attenuation from exterior noise? Would you expect it to get, to block noise? Um, we didn't test like, you know, the noise level. However, I'm uh, very positive that would significantly improve with the, um, the seal around the windows, you know, the um, uh, adding, almost adding a, uh, another additional double pane to the existing, I anticipating a, a significant uh, noise reduction. Um, Great. So, yeah. Um, what type of frame do these inserts have? Uh, this is a fiberglass frame. Uh, so um, as we all know that the fiberglass providing a superior uh, thermal performance when compared to other type of frames. Um, I don't, do you have any experience or thoughts on applying these um, inserts to a double glazed, to existing windows that are already double glazed? Um, I think number one is uh, when we talk about double glazed um, existing, because of the technologies has been in terms of double pane itself, the double glaze itself, it's, it's been a while and it's been on the conditions and you know um, quality and, and everything. Of course, this is, would be a good candidate, not only just for the existing single pane, but a um, uh, an old uh, double pane, uh, non-performing uh, uh, double pane as well, so. Great, um, is the secondary glass laminated glass? Um, it could, um, if you're looking at the detail uh, for this particular manufacturer uh, with the um, a single single pane uh, unit that they have, somehow with a single pane, they're using a very, very thin glass, that one they are using films. And then uh, with the, uh, the double pane, uh, there's an options on the uh, the thicker uh, thin glass they can uh, laminate. Yep, they can put the laminate uh, on the solar control in there. So, and another question on the glass: What's how thick is the glass or thin? And um, is it tempered? Or can it be tempered? Yeah. Um, in in general, when we talk about the definition of the thin glass, thin glass could be. Uh, three quarters of a millimeters to you know up to like one point three millimeters, uh, so it depends on the um, um, the thickness, right? So 0.75 to one point three, and when compared to a a standard glass, standard glass for the windows ranging widely ranging from the the size as well, but a a, a typical a smaller a standard it could be up to three millimeters. So we'll talk about it. So. Uh, is significantly thinner. And would you recommend these windows uh, with hurricane-proof windows? Would there be any impact there? I'm sorry. I think my my con my connection is okay. Can you hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Now we can. Um, yeah. I think um, the uh, for the hurricanes um, location again because of this one is install um, the. In inside, in, in interior um, uh, installations, um, I think the problem that you're gonna get is probably from the uh, for the exterior existing one. Um, of course, it's not uh, uh, by the standard of this unit that's come from the manufacturer. It's not a blast uh, resistance, um, but uh, 
talk to the uh, manufacturers, uh, that could be an option. But right now, with the existing uh, the product that they are pushing for now is for a broader application, not necessarily considered as a blast uh, resistant. But I'm sure that the industry move uh, towards that kind of option um, as well in the future. Um, can secondary windows or these secondary windows be used seasonally for operable windows in cold climates? Would, would that be recommended? Tyler, you might also be able to mention it, to speak to that. I'll, I'll start with me first. Okay. I, I, yeah, uh, of course, like, you know, particularly with the, um, I would call like, you know, uh, any mix, uh, my climate, uh, from the results that we are showing that, you know, climate zone like uh, four or five, um, it's working very well that when you have also pretty decent winter, also in the warm climate, you still have a, a pretty warm climate. So during a shorter season, you can experience like, you know, breeze uh, or any, um, natural ventilation that you can get through the windows. So of course, like, you know, I, I would suggest if it's applied to your uh, buildings, uh, definitely take advantage of like natural ventilation for those any existing uh, operable windows by, you know, either remove or install this uh, um, secondary window as needed. Tao, any additional thoughts on that question? I think I pretty much concur with Gasol. Obviously, a big thing if you are removing them, you need a spot for storage and safely store those during the off, off period times. Um, but yeah, if you're able to take advantage of the natural ventilation during those off off season time periods, then that makes perfect sense to do it. Um, obviously, you just want to run the analysis on what you're getting with that benefit. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks. Um, how was CR determined for the secondary windows? We had a couple of questions on that, given that you're you're um, basing it on the primary window, existing primary window. Yep. Um, again, the CRI, this is the calculated or estimated number. Um, you know, people who are familiar with the CRI, it's, you know, ranging from zero to 100. It's a, this kind of scale. Um, and you, from this, uh, from our study, uh, in, from the existing uh, single pane, uh, the CR that we get from this window only 12. So I'm um, very, very prone to uh, condensations uh, that could happen. But um, I, I don't know the if it's already happened or not, but one thing about it is we in Colorado, it's pretty dry climate. So I, I don't uh, get any uh, report about how that if during our study, the existing have any condensation. So, um, Again, once like we put together in the model, this is the calculated. So the uh, existing uh, uh, single pane and one is combined, it's significantly improved and, uh, you know, up to almost like 50 uh, CR. And when we're talking about condensation, were there any issues with condensation between the pre-existing window and the storm inserts? Um, like I mentioned, the air gap between that, it's very, very small. So I don't expect that you're going to get a lot of moisture build up between panes. That's once like the uh, cold surface temperature of the existing will going below dew point and then you start getting a lot of moisture uh, build up, become ice and those kind of things because the gap is very, very small. So I once like, you put it in there, I would expect um, less problem or none of this problem. Do we see uh, an issue with any uh, in the appearance of these It's being problematic for historic properties? Um, that's a good question. The, for the historic properties, as, as we all know, number one is there's a restriction on any changes from the outside. From the inside, sometimes it's some the restriction also. But again, this is like, um, this is removable uh, um, uh, for this uh, building. So it still maintain the aesthetics, everything for the historic. Um, if you remove it, everything is going back to the original. It's almost uh, nothing, but you know, during um, Occupy or from time to time, if 
the building happen to have occupants, not just only the buildings that are uh, empty. Uh, of course, like you know, adding this uh, will improve the significantly improve the uh, thermal performance. Um, I think you may have answered this, but it's come up a couple of times, so maybe it's worth asking again: Is is this technology only applicable for cold climates, and can we apply it in hotter climates? And would it, uh, if so, does that mean it would make the space cooler? Yes. Um, so. Because of the wide application of these uh, technologies, so it can be applied to both uh, warmer climate and cold climate. Cold climate, definitely, we recommend it. Uh, the uh, a better performance, like the uh, double pane secondary, and then the warmer climate. Um, you know, we the single pane uh, might work really, really well with the solar control. So um, the answer is like yes, they uh, it would work would work for our climate zones with the customized, you know, um, solar control, solar heat and coefficient. Great, thank you. Um, is there any application for these windows for multifamily high-rise buildings? Um, that's a good question. Um, right now, as far as I know that um, the application uh, work very well with the punch window. When we talk about high rise, sometimes it says we talk about like, you know, curtain wall, all those kind of thing. Um, um, but uh, one point that I want to make it out, even window in the larger side, um, when Tyler mentioned that maybe that larger side, we can divide this uh, window. Uh, it's happened to building 53 also, the building is pretty wide, so we end up uh, making as a two panel instead of a single panel in one windows. So um, um, the application for curtain wall, we have to probably talk with the manufacturer if the, uh, that kind of application, but in general, punch windows and then um, either whether it's going to be high rise or low rise should be applicable. Great. Um, so for warm climates, how does the economics, do we know how the economics of these windows would compare to applying window film? Um, good question. I think the cost, I don't have the, uh, the data of the cost of the films. Um, the, um, I, I would expect that probably very, very competitive between this uh, technology. Uh, of course, it sounds like, you know, applying the films seems like it's very, very easy, but uh, with this adding, um, uh, improving U factor, U values, you, you also getting uh, a lot of heat um, uh, loss or reductions, uh, you know, through uh, reduced uh, productive uh, uh, heat transfer as well. So I don't have a number on top of my head, but uh, that's a good question. And finally, are the secondary windows commercially available? Come up a couple of times. Yes. Uh, as far as I know, it's uh, commercially available, but commercially available means like uh, through manufacturers and then it's not like on the shelf in a big box store. It, it's already available. It's uh, commercially available for both uh, single and double, uh, double pain. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you all. And so we have one minute left. Um, we thanks for all those great questions, and we'll follow up uh, with the, all of the questions that we didn't get to, and, and some more detailed answers um, in an email. Um, I think, as as mentioned, this webinar is available for you can get continuing education learning units through AIA and for, for GSA attendees. You're also um, eligible for con continuous learning points, so you'll receive a survey, and by completing that survey, you can request credit. Um, uh, so thanks to um, all of our panelists and to everyone for attending. Um, great job, and we're looking forward to seeing you on our next webinar.